This is a bold look, and it's just one of six 12 inch subwoofers that you're gonna see in this video as we find out how much bass you can get for less than the cost of a tank of gas. This Infinity Primus 1200 may be the showstopper, but it's not the most interesting subwoofer in this shootout. So keep watching. Like all the subwoofers in this video, it was purchased online for under 50 bucks. Be sure to check the links down in the video description to see the current price. As soon as you turn this thing over and look at the backside, you can see that despite its distinctive style, it's a very distinctive style. It is a budget entry level subwoofer. It's got a cast frame, a single four ohm voice coil with these male connectors. It's the only subwoofer in this group with a double stacked magnet and it weighs in at about eight and a half pounds. Even though it has 1200 all over the packaging, the manual states that this is a 300 watt RMS subwoofer. Now you can't measure the power handling just by looking at the subwoofer, but it does look to be consistent with what you should expect for a 300 watt subwoofer. The cone's more than just fancy decoration, it appears to be be made out of fiberglass, which is not something you would expect to see on a subwoofer at this price point. Next up is Scar Audio. Scar Audio is the brand you love to hate. This is the iX12. Right out of the gate, you can see the Scar has some features that are going to put it at the head of the pack. It is a dual 4 ohm subwoofer. That means you can wire it down to 2 ohms and get more power from your amp or grab two of them and wire them all together for 1 ohm load. That'll give you the most bang for the buck when you're shopping for an amplifier. Plus, Scar offers this subwoofer with several different voice coil configurations. Unlike the Infinity, it uses push terminals. That is a huge plus in my book. Push terminals are just easier to use. And those terminals are connected to some woven tinsel leads. It appears to have a stamped frame with venting in the basket and it weighs in at just over nine pounds. It's got a thick rubber gasket, a paper cone with some venting on the magnet. Another plus that's hard to find at this price point, SCAR actually provides accurate power ratings. And even though the 500 watt max number is stamped all over everything the manual and the description online both say that this is a 250 watt rms subwoofer next up is the blaw punt with a single four ohm voice coil a polycone and like the scar it has push terminals and woven tinsel leads again just like the scar there is a thick rubber gasket and a stamped steel frame stamped steel frames are cheap and sturdy you should expect to see stamped frames on subwoofers in this price range i've even seen them on subwoofers that are much more expensive. There's a nice big pole vent in the back of the magnet. Notice these screws right here. These are for a ring that holds down the spider. You oftentimes see this on bigger subwoofers and more powerful subwoofers. Typically these are attached to the basket using some type of adhesive, epoxy, super glue, something like that. So a ring like this is pretty rare on a subwoofer in this price point at this power range. It weighs in at nine pounds and Blaupunt claims that this is a 400 watt RMS 800 watt max power subwoofer. Now the rule of thumb is that peak or max power should be two times the RMS power. I've got a video on the channel that walks you through that math. We'll talk more about that later, so keep watching. As far as this subwoofer goes, I do not believe that 400 watt number. It's not built any better or worse than the SCAR and the Infinity. If you're keeping score, this loses a point for an unrealistic power number. Next in the lineup is this sub right here. It's a bit of an outlier. It's the only eight ohm subwoofer will for in this shootout. It's a Pyramid Super Pro 500 watt too high temperature subwoofer. I have no idea what too high temperature means. It's got a paper cone with a poly dust cap, a stamped basket, a pole vent, plus push terminals. I honestly didn't expect to see push terminals on any of the subwoofers in this price range, so I'm thrilled that most of these subwoofers seem to have them. As for that power rating, the retail packaging says 500 watts total power. I have to assume that total power means peak or max power, so if I stick with my rule of thumb, I'm gonna call this a 250 watt RMS subwoofer. It is a bit of a lightweight coming in at just six pounds and two ounces. This next one is always a fan favorite, Boss Audio Systems. That was sarcasm. This is a four ohm dual voice coil subwoofer with 1200 watts peak stamped on every flat surface. And nothing in the manual to indicate otherwise. When we say peak power, what we mean is the power that you get at the very top of an AC wave. That's not a good measure of how much power a subwoofer can handle. You should use RMS power. RMS power is sometimes called
call continuous power. RMS stands for root mean square. It's like a complicated weighted average of the entire AC wave. So following our rule, this should be a 600 watt RMS subwoofer, but it's clearly not beefy enough for that kind of power. It's got a paper cone with a nice thick surround. Instead of a traditional dust cap, it has this seamless dish. I like the look of a seamless, well, it looks nice until you flip it over and see the stamp steel basket of puny magnet and quick disconnect style connectors instead of push terminals. There is a pole vent on the magnet, but no venting on that stamp steel basket. It weighs in at about seven pounds. Why does the weight matter? Well, the heaviest single part on most subwoofers is gonna be the magnet. You should expect a bigger magnet on a subwoofer that handles more power. And this Infinity Sub, you're probably thinking with that gold colored cone, it's probably the most interesting subwoofer in this group, but you would be wrong. Check this one out. The box says 800 watts RMS, so this may be a powerhouse. This is a pile dual four ohm subwoofer. It's got a paper cone and it has stitching on the surround. Typically the cone and the surround are stuck together with some kind of adhesive, but it's not uncommon to see stitching here to get some extra strength where these two parts come together. When we see stitching, that's typically a signal for a more powerful subwoofer. Here's another feature that I kind of like. This subwoofer's got this big plastic trim ring that gives it a recessed look. That's a neat feature, not something you see every day. We see that it has push terminals, a pole vent, and some venting built into the basket. It weighs in at about 6.3 pounds. One thing I do like, the push terminals are nice and solid. Sometimes push terminals feel flimsy, like they might pop off when you push them in. And here's the best part. That is plastic. Plastic. That is a plastic basket. What in the actual F? Who the hell builds an all plastic subwoofer? I'm gonna hook these subs up and do some testing, but before I do the testing, I'm gonna break these subwoofers into three groups based on their various quirks and features. The first group up at the top is the Scar and the Blaupunk. The middle group is gonna include the Pile, the Pyramid, and the Boss. The Infinity, with its unique look, is gonna be in a class of its own. It seems to be the beefiest of the bunch, and I think it will likely outperform all the others, but it lacks features, and that look will be a big turnoff for a lot of people. All right, back to those measurements. What I'm gonna do here is drop all these subwoofers into this SCAR prefab enclosure. I'm taking these measurements with a Umic 1, and it's plugged into a computer running Room Equalization Wizard, or Roo for short. A good alternative to a Umic 1 is an IMM6. Both of these come with a calibration file, and that's what you need for calibrated measurements. Up first is the boss. Here are the results on screen, but these results don't really mean anything since these tests are not in an anechoic chamber. I can only use this testing method to compare the subwoofers to each other in this exact specific environment. Additional measurements of things like distortion and decay plots aren't really going to be valid because I'm in this garage where everything just seems to rattle every time I play a subwoofer. To give this result context, you've got to add another subwoofer to the graph. Let's go for the infinity. Okay, there's a really big difference. The Infinity looks to be a lot more sensitive than the Boss. When I dropped the pile into the box, I ran into a problem. That big plastic ring around the outside is about an inch tall, so I had to go grab some longer screws. Let's see how it measures. So not too different from the Boss. And of course, neither is anywhere near the Infinity, so the Infinity is either in a class of its own or there's an error in my test. Next up is the Pyramid. And now it's time for the SCAR. Just from a standpoint of frequency response in this box, in this one room, these subwoofers are not really that different. Let's pop in the Blau Pump. Again, very similar response. At this point, I think it's fair to say that the infinity needs to be dropped from the results. Zooming in, it looks like the pile boss and scar are the most sensitive from this group of five. Let's move on to some in-car SPL testing and power measurements. For this test, I'm using an AMM1 to measure the power plus an SPL meter to see how loud they are. If you look on my channel, I've also got a $35 subwoofer shootout. For that video, I used a JP23 and it was just too much power for budget subwoofers they all went up in smoke. There could be some more of that later, so keep watching. My goal today though is to not blow up the subwoofers because that's just kind of wasteful. So I'm gonna use this JP8, which should be good for about 500 watts into a four ohm load. If these subwoofers are rated accurately, this amplifier shouldn't blow these subs. The goal here is to run them up to about 250 or 300 watts and see how they do on the SPL meter. One thing to know about this SPL meter, you've gotta hit 120 dB before it'll give you a read 
rating. Since several of these have listed power ratings well above the 250 and 300 watts that I reasonably expect them to be able to handle, we'll be running them up to their claimed power rating to see how well they do. Let's start with the boss. So running up to about 300 watts, we see that we do not trip the SPL meter, but the sub does have 1200 watts stamped all over the darn thing. Let's crank it up and see how it does. And it's dead. How about if we try the infinity next? Take a look at the AMM1 here. This is a single four ohm subwoofer and after the impedance rise, I can't seem to get more than 300 watts out of the amplifier. You'll also notice that as the coil heats up, the impedance starts to climb. The subwoofer seemed to have no trouble handling its rated power for this short 30 or 40 second test. Again, I don't want to destroy the subwoofer, so I'm not going to push it anymore. None of these subwoofers were able to trip the SPL meter, so we'll just ignore that SPL meter for the rest of the video. How about the plastic pile? Let's see how it does. All right, we're at 300 watts. It seems to handle 300 watts just fine, but the box says it's good for 800. So let's give it some more juice. just more than the sub can handle. The amp went into protect, which is exactly what you want your amp to do in a scenario like this. Let's get this thing out of the box so we can try the next sub. Oh yeah, smoky. <laughs> Let's try the Pyramid Super Pro. I doubt that I'll be able to blow the pyramid since it's an eight ohm subwoofer. And I'm not gonna get a lot of power out of the amp after you account for the impedance rise. Once again, you can watch the impedance rise as the coil heats up. We never even hit 200 before the subwoofer checks out. Next on deck is the SCAR, which seems to have no trouble with its rated power. But just for kicks and giggles, let's see if it can handle the full might of the JP-8. Full transparency here, the clip light on the amp was on, even though the AMM1 did not show clipping and the scar did not survive. In fact, it got a little smoky, but that's only because I was abusing the sub. Next up is the Blaupunt. This, like the Infinity, is a single four ohm voice coil. It's rated for 400 watts. Let's see what happens. I was never able to get more than 300 watts, and as the coil heated up and the impedance climbed, that power started to drop. I pulled the plug on this one before the subwoofer went up in smoke. The Infinity and the Blau Pump were the only ones to survive the abuse. That's probably because they were wired to 4 ohms and that limited the power from the amplifier. Even though I destroyed the SCAR, I'm still going to give it a pass since I cranked it up well beyond the rated power claimed by the manufacturer. The Pile and the Boss both get an F in the power test since these things can't handle anywhere near their absurd power claims. And I'm gonna give the pyramid a D minus since its power claims are a bit more realistic, even though it couldn't handle 200 watts. If I'm being 100% honest, these subs all failed because I abused them. If you're trying to get bass on a shoestring budget, don't throw any more than 200 watts at any of those three subwoofers and they'll be just fine. But how would you ever know that if it weren't for people like me out here trying to make helpful videos to show you what these things are actually capable of? Here is my final ranking. I'm gonna put the in last place for using a plastic basket and of course heavily penalized
penalized for providing unrealistic power rating. I'm going to call the boss in the pyramid basically a tie. So above that, I'm going to put the infinity. The infinity probably should have been higher up in the ranking, but it's getting penalized because it doesn't have a lot of the features the other ones do. I would have loved to have seen some push terminals on this subwoofer. The reality is it's probably the best performer, but those lack of features is going to get it knocked down in my ranking. Second place goes to the Blaupunk, mostly because it has those push terminals, leaving the scar at the top of the list. With a realistic power rating, tons of features, it's a solid subwoofer. But before you run out and buy one, watch this video right now here because you might be able to find a better sub for even less money. Before I go, I need to say thank you to all of my patrons, especially $25 and up patrons, Bo, Timothy, Dylan, JD America, Mark, Paul, David, and Jonathan. I'm Justin. This is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.